Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you and explaining to you how I dyed my papers. Some of it's tea dyed, some of it's Kool-Aid, um, some of it's food coloring. So I'm just going to start flipping through and kind of explaining things. Um, this is a piece of ledger paper and um, it's just tea dyed. For my tea dye, I um, I typically make the tea solution pretty strong and I use instant tea. Um, whenever I first started tea dyeing, I used tea bags and um, I used like a cheaper great value brand or something like that and it works, but you get a very light um, coloring. Using instant tea, you do get a darker color You can because you can kind of make it stronger and I can get the water to where it's almost black. That's how dark I want my tea personally, to where I get, you know, these cool, um, the cool dark color and blotches and stuff like that. Um, so this one, with, with the pages, I typically put them in the tea solution for, I don't know, about two to five minutes at least. I, I have a pan that I, it's about inch and a half thick, and I stack the pages in it, and then once I get um, the pan full, I leave it for another two to five minutes at least. And um, in order to dry them, I actually lay trash bags out on my floor and even across to like my bed. And I will then um, place the pages onto the trash bag and uh, let it air dry. I turn my fan on medium and um, depending on the day, some days it's about 12 hours and some days it's as few as like 8 hours, you know, so it just depends. But by air drying them, I don't get that um, wrinkled, crunchy texture that will not flatten. I have done the ones in the oven and you can't flatten them, even if you iron them. And I don't, I just don't like it. Um, so it, it's kind of preference. If you want that crunchy, wrinkled texture, put them in the oven. If you want them to be completely flat, air dry them. Of course, they're not going to air dry flat, but I had my dad and my little brother make me this, which I'll see if it's on camera properly. Nope. So in each corner, it's got these um, long screws, a uh, washer, a wing nut, and um, it's a paper press. They used uh, some left a piece of leftover uh, plywood, and they cut it in half and uh, sanded it down, put the holes in it. And put the screws, the wing nuts, the washers in it for me. And I just put my paper, once it's dry, in between the two pieces of plywood, tighten it, lock it down as tight as I can. And I leave it for 24 to 48 hours, and my paper's pretty well flat. Um, doing that process of air drying it and then putting it in to the paper press. So that's my preference with that. And um, I'm going to show you how not show you tell you but I'll tell you so like to get designs on paper this is tea dye again and these designs is actually just paper doilies that I also tea dyed and I laid on top of the paper so once I pulled the piece of um, 8.5 by 11 inch paper out and I laid it on my trash bag then I put some doilies in my tea solution got them wet and then I laid them on top of the paper and I just let it air dry like that. And then it puts these designs on it. It's as simple as that to get designs on your paper. Not everything works. I've tried doing some laces. They didn't work because um, the, the design was too close together. So you need something that's got enough space, you know, that it's gonna show up. Um, and even if you just take a piece of tea dye paper and lay it over like this to let them dry, you're going to have this white mark here on your page and then it'll also be on the back where wherever they were touching it's going to have that lighter color and this design here I get just because I lay it on the trash bag some of them do this some of them don't um, but a lot of them do especially if the tea solution is pretty strong um, it's just that's just the way it laid on the trash bag and dried I don't have any other explanation for it, um, but it turns out pretty cool, and it, I don't—I didn't really have to do anything to get that, you know. 
So I like that. And this page is a splatter page. I just simply laid the white piece of paper down on my treasure bag. I put my hands in the tea solution and then I just kind of, you know, touched my fingertips to the page. And you can even uh, dip it in the solution and kind of go like this, like you would with a paintbrush and paint, and it's going to splatter it all over the place. And I, I, again, I like how that turns out. So there's that one. And this is not tea dye. This is, well, actually it was tea dye. So what happened was I had um, been tea dyeing paper, just white copy paper, and I was like, I want to do some red. I want to see what will happen if you do red. Bad idea. <laughs> not a bad idea, but bad idea. Um, so I let the paper soak for quite a while, thinking that it would soak up the tea, right? It didn't. It's the red, same red color it was. But I was like, okay, well, since it's not working, I'm just going to put some more white paper and use up this tea. I ended up with this almost vintage pink, I guess you could call it. I don't know if it shows up on camera. But I ended up with this vintage pink color. And you can also mimic this by putting red food coloring in your tea dye solution. Um, I've done that as well. So tea with red dye, you get a really pretty vintage pink. And this is one that was oven dried, I believe. Let me see, I got another one I think that I, I definitely know. Yeah, these, these two I believe are oven dried and you can kind of see the wrinkling, you know, it. you can't get them flat. Um, especially on the edges. So that's why I don't like doing the oven. And they're a bit more crunchy than the other pages. And this one is just red food coloring and you get this pink color. So there's that one. I don't remember how I'm stacking these. I don't know if I'm doing it right or not. <laughs> just trying to keep them stacked in a certain order. And this darker pink color. So this was actually supposed to be purple and it ended up being just a very dark pink. Um, so I did blue food coloring and red food coloring and it came out a lot of them came out dark pink some of them and it's even dark on this side so that was the side that was up the side that's touching your trash bag or your pan is going to be lighter once again than the side that's facing up and is exposed to air um, this is the other ones what some of them turned out with the red and blue food coloring. So I got this blue marble. It's mostly pink and then I got a blue marbling going on, which is really pretty. But um, whenever I'm going for purple, it's not purple. So that's, that's that. But still, nonetheless, it's pretty. So if you want um, that marble texture, kind of mix your food coloring and some of them's going to be marbled, some of them's going to be a solid dark pink. Or at least that's the way it worked for me. Since I didn't get purple with the food coloring, I thought, try Kool-Aid. Nothing changed, really. Um, it's almost purple. It's very dark, pinkish, kind of purple. With It's still got blue veining going on. Um, it's almost still almost marbleized texture. I really don't know if the camera's picking it up or not. But that's what I got with the food coloring. And I let that one soak for quite a while, thinking the longer it soaks, you know, the... Uh, more chances I'm going to get purple, right? Not, not really. Didn't really change a thing. The last few pages that I dyed in that uh, solution with the um, grape Kool-Aid, which also had vinegar. I thought vinegar would help hold the colors together. It didn't change much, though. Um, but the last few were almost blue. Almost completely blue. There's very little pink. It's got the blue veining, but it's more blue than it is um, pink or purple, so... There's that one. Um, tea dyeing, copy paper, colored copy paper. This was a light shade of blue, and now it's like an eggshell blue. I don't. Again, I don't know if the camera does it justice, but um, that's what happened with tea dyeing um, colored copy paper, a light blue. And then this one was green, and it's still green, but it's a little bit more dingy than um, it was in the beginning. It was more of a bright green whenever I put it in the solution. <laughs> um, coffee, and that, I, I might have lied. It could have been tea or it could have been coffee, I'm not sure. I did one one day and one the next and I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure which one's which. Um, 
coffee dye though and green food coloring and again I don't know that it picks up well enough on camera but more coffee than green is was what I was going for and um, it kind of get a kind of got an earthy type of tone and in order to get this veining going on here stack your pages so whenever you take one out of the tea dye solution you put it on the trash bag you take another one and you stack it right on top and you take another one and you stack it right on top and you can do that as many times as you want um, I just do three maybe five at most one it's going to take longer to dry and you're going to have to come throughout the day and separate them two um, the only page that's really going to look like this is going to be the first if you do like five the first two may look like this if you do two or three pages only the top one's going to look like this. And the rest of them are going to be dyed, but they're not going to have the speckled and veining going on. They'll just be a, a solid color. So that's how you get that. Um, you can dye these lined pages. Um, I, again, this was green. I think this one was green and tea dye, and this one was the green and coffee. I'm not sure though. Um, but that's some of them that I did. Moving on to stencils. And these stencils that I have are by, from Stencil Revolution. I will put a link below. Um, really glad I got them. They work really well for this. Sorry for that alarm going off. I need to take some medicine, but I'll wait till I'm done filming. And um, this is the lion head that um, I got from Stencil Revolution. Really like how it turns out. All I did was I put the paper in the tea solution, let it soak. If you do not let it soak, you will not get a proper print. So let it soak. Once it's fully soaked, two to five minutes, you know, put it on the trash bag and then immediately take your stencil and lay it on top. Um, and I'll show you the stencil. So let me pull it out here. So this is a stencil. And all I did, like I said, was I laid it on top. If it's soaked, if your page is soaked properly, the moment that you lay it down to the page, it's going to like suction to the page. The um, liquid's going to pull it down. And as it dries, um, the this part of the page, you know, that's exposed is gonna dry first. And then the part that's um, covered up by this stencil will take longer to dry. But um, still about, eight to 12 hours, they're dry. Um, like I said, I have my fan on medium, so that helps with it. Um, but that's it, that's all I did. I laid it, I literally just laid it down on top of it and let it dry. Um, so there's that one. I did this one with the Jesus and the Forgiven stencils. So that's this stencil and the Forgiven one wherever it is. <laughs> now I'm not finding it. And it's right here. If I can get a hold of it. So again, same thing. I just laid them on top where I wanted them. You can put them wherever you want them, however you want them. Um, I chose to do it like this. Um, I was thinking maybe a small pocket could go here, a small pocket could go here on the page if somebody wanted. Um, in the back of them, you kind of still get the stencil design as well, just not as dark. And whenever it's words, it's not going to be going the right way on the back side. Um, I did this one, the Be Still and No, Psalms 46.10. And like I said, just let your page soak, lay it on your trash bag, put your stencil on it, turn your fan on medium, let it dry. Don't touch it till it's dry. Pretty much. Um, I did this one. At the Heart and Roses stencil. And it's somewhere. Oh, there it is. So that stencil there. And um, again, these are all by Stencil Revolution. She kindly sent these to me. Um, I had purchased one from her and she kindly sent me some more to do some videos with. Um, which I'm really grateful for and from my perspective stencils are a great investment in your craft supplies because you can do so many things with them and you're always going to have them as long as you don't lose them so and they're they're sturdy they're pretty sturdy in my opinion and I mean you've got to take care of them like anything but 
And it's the, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. I'll show you what I store my, I have found to store my stencils in in just a second. So this one's the Be Kind. And then, and you can choose what size of stencil you want. So like for instance, this one, I chose the one that was pretty much the size of a page, 8.5 by 11 inch. But she also sent me, let me find the smaller one. She also sent me this one. Um, I don't know exactly what the measurements are on it, but it's the same exact stem stencil. It's just a smaller version of it. So, and that's the leaf stencil. And I think that's a pretty cool design, in my opinion. I really like how that one turns out. And I'm great for woodland animals or um, like a botanical type of journal, woodsy journal. Um, so then I got the deer and two separate stencils. So there's that deer and then there's this deer. And again, I put them like that because I thought, again, small pockets could go here or some people could just write all over the page. It's really up to, you know, the person making the journal, I suppose. <laughs> um, so that's that. And what I store my stencils in really quick is a three ring binder and these little sleeves for the uh, page protectors, I think they're called. So that's what I store mine in. Let me move all these out of the way and I'll show you some more pages. So to get this effect, this really cool splattered effect, but the whole page is dyed. How does that happen? I have dyed pages so many times trying to figure this out. You have to dye it twice. It's that simple. You dye one page extremely light in color and um, so you want to just put it in, don't let it soak very long, or have your tea solution very light if you are going to let it soak very long. And uh, set it on your trash bag, let it air dry. I flatten it and put it in my paper press. And then the next time I tea dye, I simply lay those dyed pages onto my trash bags and then I pour tea over it. This takes a long time to dry. This is definitely a 12 hour page because you have these big huge petals and you can see where it kind of started drying at first and where there was more tea that caused it to get darker and um, take longer to dry. Um, but again, it's it's a 12 hour process for drying it. Um, pretty simple though to do. It's a lot of work, but not hard work. Um, and then also I'm going to show you what it looks like to stamp on a plain tea dyed page. And these are some of the stamps that I have and what I've done. And the main reason that I'm showing you this is because all of these pages, or a stack of pages exactly like what I've just shown you, I'm doing a giveaway as a thank you for the 250 subscribers that I have received. And um, praise the Lord for all the blessings that he has given me to be able to craft and um, given me so many friends on YouTube and um, so many subscribers. I thank all of you for subscribing to my channel. And um, so for all of those of you who are subscribed to my channel, if you want to enter the giveaway, if you want some of these pages, I, I'm only giving one stack away, but um, so there'll only be one winner. But you do have a chance to win, and um, I guess one in 250. <laughs> but uh, if you will just leave a comment with one emoji, you get to choose the emoji. I don't care which emoji you choose, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my niece scroll through the comments and she's going to pick out which emoji she likes. And that is going to be the winner. Um, so don't, don't comment a lot of emo emojis, just one. And, um, again, I'll let my niece scroll through them and pick out which one she likes. And that will be our winner. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy the fun of the giveaway. Um, and don't forget that you do need to be subscribed to enter. So um, that's, that's pretty much everything, I think. Um, trying to think if I forgot anything, but I really don't think that I did.
um, hopefully I didn't. So anyways, that's all for this video. I hope it was helpful and informative, and I hope you join me in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.